There are so many ways to come to USA after your MBBS without residency and I only found out this after I came here for my research position. Hi guys, my name is Dr. Kavita and I finished my residency in radiation oncology after which I decided to come to USA. But I did not want to do the residency just after coming but I want to explore the other options as well. Welcome to my channel. So today, this is a Q&A video. Many of you guys have asked me repeated questions regarding research and USMLE and the whole pathway and if there are any other ways. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the questions that I asked in my Instagram uh, video that uh, you guys wanted to know answers to. So starting with the first question, how to get research opportunity electives or observership in USA? Okay, so that is a very uh, vague question, but let's start with the research opportunity. So you should be using very right term while reaching out to people, you know, uh, so it can be a program director or it can be head of the department or even a principal investigator of the department that you want to apply research in. So to get a research opportunity, you you should first formulate an email and reach out to people from different hospitals individually of you know one particular department and uh, just shoot out them email regarding what your interest in research is and if you have any even if little background in research and how your profile as a student or as a researcher aligns with them for example you do not need like many publications but suppose if you have done even one case report or even one article on particular study so that area you can reach out to you know that doctor who is already doing active research in that area for example suppose if you have done if you have done something is in diabetes so you can actually reach out to people who are you know doing active research in diabetes and you know your profile with will actually align with the people that they might be looking for now your question can be do they even need those people or is there any vacancy so regarding that not always vacancies are published so it is very important that you actively reach out to people and for electives it's kind of a similar process you reach out to people if you don't want to pay money sometimes uh, people give you electives or observerships in free if you reach out to right people in the hospitals and uh, you just have to pay the minimum fee that is required for the hospital but that's it but if you apply for the clinics then it requires you know large sum of uh, fee okay so the next question is how many number of researches are required by a person to make sure to get selected in residency honestly it's a good question but there is no single answer to that because uh, as many as five to ten researches are really good for very competitive field like neurology but being said that people also uh, with research like one to three also get matched so it totally depends on which kind of field you are targeting and also most of it also depends on uh, do you have connections or not so uh, but to have at least one to three researches is good to begin with and for researchers you don't need to do like massive researches and also please here I would like to say do not pay money to people to just get your name published because whenever you do some research it should make sense to your profile so you doing random researches which does not align with your profile will not help you so it would be better to get associated with professors in your college hospital or even in hospitals in your area and just doing like free work for them so that your name get can get published people do that and it is very much possible and you get exposure even if your name does not come as like the primary or the secondary author uh, how do research help us in building a competitive CV and how many researches are ideal again I answered that question but uh, do not 
be uh, like way uh, competitive in that and do not focus just on researches but uh, focus on the quality of research for example you can start with case report but obviously original articles will be of higher value and uh, a research that is published in a good index index journal would be preferred more how to get research fellowship without usmle now this is the question that so many people have asked me and yes i did uh, clear usmle step 1 before coming here but honestly it was not needed and that i have shared on my instagram multiple times that for research fellowship even though i have done md but as a med student you can also apply for research fellowship all you have to do is just shoot out emails and even uh, reach out to people on linkedin so you just simply reach out to people on linkedin writing a short message and asking them requesting them if you can mail them if there is any open position so i started by a uh, text testing people on linkedin by asking them if they could guide me so what would be the ideal way so for example if you are targeting research in neurology so if i would be that person then i would start first building my linkedin profile and then reaching out to neurology uh, residents or fellows just to make my connection and build my connection so that later in days when i reach out to a uh, attending or a principal investigator in neurology department so they would see me as person who has a common neurology interest and common connection so you would have more chances of getting accepted as a connection and then you can you know slowly start reaching out to different people people yes mostly are helpful but do not ask them lots of question start small and start uh, sending many text message to many people and uh, like even if 8 uh, out of 10 people do not respond or do not respond the way you want but at least two two will so you have to you know take that chance does only pubmed publish research is valuable other publishers like scorpus does hold uh honestly uh pubmed uh, index journals are preferred so do not waste time like lots of time in other kind of journals which are not in index but just to start your research journey you can still start with any journal as long as it gives you experience because later on if you apply for any research opportunity you will at least have the experience of working on a paper because working on a paper is just not about publishing but also about data collection and you know analysis and writing the dis- discussion and the whole paper so even if your name is not on the top list even if that journal is not indexed but what no one can take from you is the experience that you gained while working on that paper so you have to make decision uh, where you stand in uh, terms of publishing so start uh, from there So the next question is hi doc i am doing pg in md physiology after mbbs can you please guide me post doc fellowship in us and canada after my md thanks i like your videos very informative and motivating thank you so much uh yes so uh, first thing is so many med students and people who have cleared mbbs have asked me to apply for post doc fellowship and i have repeatedly told that uh, post doc fellowship is only for people who have cleared either md or who have done phd so always use the right term while reach, uh, reaching out to attendings otherwise you will uh, not be making a very good first impression when you do not use the right terminology in this case yes if you have done md in physiology or any other subject so you can apply for post doc fellowship in usa in canada but since you have non clinical field so you will have to make a decision that you will either be doing in your own field or in a different field but uh, the first step will be again like reaching out to pi's in physiology and also in genetics if it is related to your field and then uh, reaching out to same people on linkedin as well or through individual emails and if you have any uh, published research already that will make your cv stronger and uh, those subjects or those topics 
are the topics that will kind of give you direction like what kind of ps because there are so many hospitals so many attending so many doctors that you would need to reach out so you will know how to kind of you know make your list uh, while talking about this i would also say that you should be very clear and uh, you should make a list shorter and shorter because there are so many hospitals so if you know uh, this hospital aligns with your goals or this attending is doing something that you have done then your chances of selection increases for the next question ma'am if it is okay can i know how did you search for research opportunities in linkedin it was it was quite complicated when i tried to search it myself okay when you go in linkedin so uh, in the search bar there is an option for clinical research coordinator or uh, study coordinator or clinical research fellow even postdoc fellow so these kind of uh, kind of uh, the search terms you can use in the linkedin uh, search option and then uh, you can just turn that uh, bar on so that every time they have any jo job postings then you can find uh, the latest job search because in that also there is an option where you can you know find the jobs that were very recently published and there are more chances of getting accepted in those especially something that has been posted like within days so do that also but also when somebody looks at your profile linkedin profile it should be very clear what you have done in you know your career and are you open to work so in my profile it was always written like open to work in us in research or something like that so make sure you do that okay uh, so for the last question it is uh, hi ma'am hope you are doing well i have done my mbbs and want to study abroad for higher education is mph good or should i apply for phd need your guidance and also share any scholarship available for mph well thank you i am doing good for your question after mbbs if you are looking already for higher education i don't know how high you want to go but uh, jokes apart uh, uh, let's talk about first mph so mph is masters in public health and yes scholarships are available but since it's a degree course so you will have to pay a fee and it is like for the semesters but uh, you should also know that uh, people who want to apply for eventually residency uh, opt for mph especially the people who have done mbbs or they completely want to shift to the clinical research because in mph you get like lots of study in data science and uh, analysis epidemiology so mph is something very similar to community medicine and uh, uh, psm in uh, india uh with lots of stats involved so you can also go in data analytics in health if you are looking for something that is uh you know not the clinics so that is one option but if your eventual goal is applying for residency so it might be a longer pathway then you might want to do it and it would also require more money than rather than you know just doing research observership or research fellowship so make your decision accordingly why do you want to do mph regarding phd again if you have very specific goals after phd because searching jobs after phd is also so a little bit of struggle especially these days so you should know what do you want to do after phd because there are so many people that go either in the pharma industry or even in like uh, the teaching industry so you should know after mbbs if you are doing a second degree why do you want to do that and especially for phd which is already like 6 7 years long like do you really want to do that so your reason should be very clear before investing so much time after mbbs you know because mostly people here are not crazy for degrees i would tell you that so do not just enroll yourself in a degree to come to usa there are also many options with like you know less uh kind of uh, expenses so you should know why do you want to apply for phd but if you want and if you know so yes de definitely you can do phd and uh, they also pay you in that so that 
that would be sorted but it will not be a crazy amount but still you can get take care of your expenses so if you like this video please tell me in comments and if you have more questions and the question that i should make the next video on then tell me in comments and also check out my instagram uh, with dr kmd and un until next time see you guys take care